Yo, what's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint. I'm back with another recent reads. I just got done reading the uh, Wolverine by Jason Aaron Omnibus. Um, stick around and we'll uh, we'll give a review. All right, guys, so I want to make this spoiler free. There's not really any spoilers to be had here. But this was my first time reading any of this material, and it's not really a complete run. It's just like uh, a couple of Jason Aaron's early Wolverine stories, including the first story he ever wrote, which was a contest that got him the job with Marvel. Uh, so there was a really interesting foreword by him uh, in here, which I read it, and um, it was pretty cool. That's actually the last issue in the book. But the Wolverine by Jason Aaron Omnibus has a $100 cover price. It collects Wolverine 56, then 62 through 65, which is a Wolverine and Mystique story. You get Wolverine Manifest Destiny 1 through 4, which uh, is a, uh, a Chinatown story. It's like almost like it reminds me of Madripoor Wolverine, but it's something, in it. it said it was Chinatown. You get Wolverine Weapon X 1 through 16, uh, which a actually has a couple of different storylines. There's a storyline, and, and we'll show the artwork, where the Weapon X program has made artificial type of Wolverines, laser claws and stuff like that. There's a cool story with Wolverine in a, a sane asylum. It kind of reminds me of that American Horror Story, a sane asylum. Basically any insane, uh, insane asylum where, am I insane, am I not insane? They're in there, there's crazy antics going around. That was pretty cool. Mystique comes back. Then there's a pretty cool uh, Terminator type of Deathlock story, which pretty much wraps up the omnibus. So, uh, yeah, after 1 through 16, you get Dark Reign, the list, and material from Wolverine 73 through 74, Dark X-Men, the beginning, number 3, and Wolverine 175, which was that first um, Jason Aaron story. So, I'll, get, I'll probably take a picture at the back so you guys can get a good look at the covers. But under the dust jacket, uh, you have a blue leather bound type of book with silver embossed uh, logos and letters mine is a little dinged up i bought this used this i bought this a couple years ago um and i'm just finally getting to it uh let's take a look at some of the artwork in here and i'll and i'll go over some of the highlights of the stories staying spoiler free all right guys let's kind of do a little over the shoulder kind of thing man i'm trying to experiment with different uh ways to show the artwork and a lot of people like the overhead look but it's kind of hard to flip through the pages like that so here goes the cover here's the back no big deal so I already mentioned uh, the hard cover looks like so let's take a look at what's inside pretty cool Wolverine here goes all the stories. Oh, the man in the pit. That was a cool story. So we'll look at this a little bit. Here's the introduction to the uh, to the Jason Aaron stuff, to, to his uh, forward. And <laughs> what drew me to it was the big words, uh, the big letters. I'm like, okay, this is not a whole novel. Let's read up on Jason Aaron real quick. You know, we met the guy. And it's pretty cool, man. He basically, uh, he, he wrote in... Uh, for a contest, and he was chosen out of like thousands of people, and then he became a writer. Like, boom, that was it. Changed his life. If he would have never done that contest, may have never become a writer. So Wolverine 56, this is like a standalone story about this guy who goes to work. He's an unassuming guy, but his job is to um, sit in a chair with this big-ass gun and just keep on shooting Wolverine, who's in a pit. It's a pretty cool story. I don't, I don't want to give it away, but it starts delving into this guy's life, and Wolverine kind of gets in his head, and one thing leads to another. And it's a pretty cool story. But again, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to give away any spoilers. All right, let's see. Then you have the next storyline, which is Get Mystique. Now, what they do is they kind of show why Wolverine and Mystique. Um, our enemies and it shows them first meeting back in 1921 now I didn't realize mystique was old like Wolverine but uh, yeah she is she's old she's an old lady and uh, 
Actually, this is, actually this is a really cool scene. Um, man, you know what? I don't want to give any spoilers because Mystique, Mystique is slick, man. So then it goes into the past, and Wolverine and Mystique basically have this um, this little crew they put together to pull a heist, and everyone's backstabbing everyone else, and. Uh, there's a cool twist at the end, so don't want to give a spoiler on that. Looking like the Sideshow statue, right? Alright, so yeah, then we're still Mystique. So that story lasts for like, what, five issues or something? Cool stuff, though. This was nasty. Threw up in the guy's face. Alright, what else do we got? Wolverine Manifest Destiny 1. So yeah, it was moving day at the X Mansion. Basically, Wolverine just got beers. You got some Nightcrawler appearance. Yeah, so this is the one, like I mentioned, where uh, the story takes place in Chinatown. 50 years ago, Wolverine uh, killed the um, the Black Dragon, which was the head of the, one of the gang's I think it was the triads, or they were rivals of the triads, or something like that. But when you kill the Black Dragon, you become the Black Dragon. But he didn't want to do it. So basically, he was banned from Chinatown. Uh, and then 50 years later, he comes back to kind of make amends. And, you know, shit kind of hits the fan. So there's these cool uh, fighters that the Black Dragon has. This kind of a rock guy who's kind of like the thing. Uh, there's this guy. Look at this. There's this guy that can punch you in your soul. <laughs> that was cool. Um, who's the other guy? The one guy punches you in the soul. The one guy's a big rock guy. The other guy has some kind of telekinesis sword, I guess. One of the guys, the fist of fire. Yeah, sword storm. So you know they they whoop his ass, and he's got he's got to basically train again, which was cool. He gets trained by, like, a stick type of character, this guy. So it's kind of reminiscent of the Frank Miller miniseries where he has to learn how to fight and not just be some... Don't rely on your healing factor and just get whooped up because these guys are punching you in your soul and shit. You know what I mean? Like, you need, you're you going to need to train a little bit. So that's, that's Manifest Destiny. So it's a four or five part story as well. We getting the art good in here? I know. These modern pages, it's hard with the glare, right? Alright. Then we go to A Mile in My Moccasins, which is kind of cool. It shows... So, at this point in time in Wolverine, the, the Wolverine storyline, he gets his memories back. And that's not a good thing. He remembers every freaking person he killed, every kind of crazy thing he did. So it shows him Sunday morning, boom, he's fighting Juggernaut in his yellow and blue, right? Then Monday, he's fighting this weird guy with the uh, Avengers. Then Tuesday, he's with Punisher, and he's he's fighting these guys. Then he's Uncanny X-Force on Wednesday. Then on Thursday, he's fighting Mystique with X-Men. Then he's teaming up with Spider-Man on Friday. Saturday, he's over here in Madripoor, or whatever the hell he's at. And, and it keeps showing, like, he's just pushing himself. Every single day, he's doing everything, you know what I mean? And it's because he's trying not to think of all the shit that he did. And it's kind of showing how uh, he's wearing himself out, too. That was cool, man. And actually, this is where he gets a girlfriend. So he, he ends up uh, in a relationship, which he's apprehensive about, because everybody he, who he's ever been in a relationship with has gotten killed. And uh, he gets in a relationship, and that's kind of a big funny thing. You know, other heroes and mutants are like, hey, I heard you got a girlfriend. It's kind of funny. So that's what's going on here. What else is going on here? Yeah, so this is where you get these engineered Weapon X program guys with their laser claws and their healing factors. And they're kind of like Bloodshot from the Valiant universe with the nanobites. That's their healing factor. So he's got to go up against a bunch of those guys. And he realizes that he can't really uh, go up against them all at once. It was a cool story. Yeah, so it's more of those guys. What else? Uh, 
this is the dark rain stuff. So what happens here? Huh, I don't remember. Alright, whatever. No biggie. So this is the insane asylum stuff. So Wolverine's there, and it's kind of like any other insane asylum thing that you've ever seen, right? And the headmaster, of course, is crazy. And actually, this is where we get introduced, where they're uh, experimenting on brains, and they're 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 kind of creating these brain machines, and that takes uh, that's important later on in, in the death uh, the Deathlock storyline. See, I mean, this is kind of like it almost didn't feel like a Wolverine story in that sense. Yeah. Psylocke and Nightwing come through to try to help him out. I don't want to give too much away on that. Then you got the Deathlock stuff. The Deathlock plays out kind of just like a Terminator story. But it, it's a good read, though. I liked it. And, and there's multiple Deathlocks. None of them are the, one, the, the original ones. But, um... Yeah, man, so... I don't really want to say how that plays out, but it's a cool story. Oh, then you have um, a post-Nightcrawler death issue, which, you know, uh, Nightcrawler and Wolverine, they're probably, like, the closest ones as far as friends go with the X-Men, right? So, he, you know, it's the aftermath of his death. It's kind of very religious, and so is um, Jason Aaron's first storyline. So uh, it's kind of religious, and Wolverine's like kind of an atheist, but Nightcrawler keeps trying. He's reminiscing over the years of Nightcrawler trying to make him have faith, and then when he dies, he, he gives him this task to bring this $2,000 uh, piano up to this church on a hill where you can't fly or drive there. So he's got a basic, he basically gives him this task. And, uh, and, and it kind of ends like it opens his eyes on what Kurt was trying to teach him the, the whole time. So Wolverine 75, that's from his first run, the 1988 uh, ongoing, which this is uh, Jason Aaron's first uh, story that he ever wrote. It's a short little story of basically helping this woman whose car broke down. But it's kind of weird, like, how he really makes her with, like, a southern religious accent. It's almost a little st stereotype, you know, and I don't know, maybe back then it flew. And then in the back you got variant covers, which are dope. Yeah, so I really enjoyed uh, the Wolverine Omnibus. It was a fun, quick read. It wasn't too daunting. I think I read it in two, three days, maybe. And that's not even, like, trying to read it fast. Just here and there, casually reading a couple issues. I was going to read the uh, Wolverine Goes to Hell Omnibus, which is, like, basically the follow-up to this. But I figured, forget that, I'll just do two videos. So I'm, I'm going to start reading that now. And then I'm going to jump into Avengers by Hickman Volume 2. And then I got to jump out of Marvel and get into something else. Maybe something DC. Uh, maybe something independent. Hey, I'm always up for re uh, recommendations. Uh, what you guys want to see a recent reads on. But, um, yeah, man, I guess that wraps up the recent reads for Wolverine by Jason Aaron Omnibus. I don't believe this is in stock, this book. You can check InStockTrades.com, but I think that it's a, an out-of-print book, but not really like a whale. Um... Hit that like on the way out. Let me know what you thought of the story. If you read it, uh, if you haven't read it, you plan on doing it now. And uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more recent read reviews. Uh, daily content surrounding comic books. So <laughs> make sure to hit that sub up. And uh, y'all stay minty fresh.